Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna to be touching up this Pennywise bus from the movie It. Before I get started on this Pennywise base, let's go pick up some supplies. By the end of this video, you should have a good ground base on how to achieve a nice rusted metal effect. I'm only repainting the sewer door and the metal pipe on the side of this. I'm just trying to make this base pop a bit more, have some different textures, and trying to bring this piece a little bit more to life. Here are some of the supplies I picked up from Hobby Lobby. This one is a metallic silver by Krylon. I like using this brave paint just because out of all the silver paints that come in a can, Usually if you put clear coat over it, it turns gray. And I found out that this style of a can, if you have this classic spray paint can look and it's metallic silver, it usually doesn't turn gray. And I can actually clear coat over this one and without having any problems. And this is gonna be our base for the whole sewer door right here. Next up is this color. I'm gonna have a little bit of a rust color. This is a good color to put all over the metal and it has a nice little brownish reddish tones to it. And burnt umber, black, Mars black, any black is fine. I picked these three colors up and these are gonna be my main colors. I'm gonna use throughout the whole weathering process on the door. We got a chrome marker. This is probably one of the best chrome markers to use. I know a lot of people like to take this apart and put it in their airbrush and it gives a nice really chrome metal effect. And I'm just gonna be using this marker to touch up the edges to make it look like it's an actual metal door. Right here is some textured sea sponges and it's gonna give a nice textured look. That way it's not even and it has a broken up pattern all over here. It should be pretty simple and easy using those sponges. I'm not gonna be airbrushing anything on here just because I think for this look, airbrushing would make stuff look too flat and I want some kind of depth to it. I think that'd be okay to use all over. And here is some frog tape I'm gonna be using to mask up the door and all the areas I don't want paint as well as inside of here because I don't want to get any extra paint behind the sewer door here. What you just saw me do was mask off the whole area with frog tape and I used some uh, black garbage bags that way I don't get paint on any of the base that I don't want paint on. And right now I am gonna seal the metal spray paint with a clear coat. This is totally optional. I just use this as a precaution. That way I'm sealing each layer with clear coat. And if there's too much acrylic paint in one spot where I don't want that much paint, I can just wipe it away and the spray paint is not gonna come off. But usually if you let this dry for about an hour, the spray paint is pretty durable. But like I said, I like to do this as a precaution. Thirty minutes has gone by and the clear coat is finally all set where I can actually do the weathering and rust process on this. One other reason why I like clear coating metal is just because I can put my hand or my fingers on here and it's not going to leave any fingerprints. Plus it gives you a smoother finish. For the actual weathering part, I am going to use a regular clear cup. What I like to do is get a pair of scissors, cut about half of this cup and go around the whole thing. It does not have to be perfect. And this is what you should have. The reason why I like using wider, bigger cups is I can actually put my paintbrush in here and you can see how much room there is and I actually can go around this without any problems. If I were to use smaller, clear cups, I probably couldn't fit this whole brush in here and this holds much more paint than a smaller cup. In the order I'm gonna do the colors, it's gonna be from a light, reddish brown to a darker brown and then black for last. You do not want to start with a darker color first because you cannot lighten up a darker color. If it comes out too dark, you might as well just start it over. Go light to black 
it's way better and it's easier because if you mess up you can always add more to it instead of backtracking the way i'm going to weather this is just going to be simple washes if you don't know what a wash is it's where you take a little bit of paint about this much and you get a little bit of water i'm using distilled water spray that in or pour that in depending on what you're using and i'm just going to take the bottom of my paintbrush as a mixer i like to use a martini mixer that's what the, they like to call it and just do that once i do a little bit of layering on here i am going to move up to the next color and go in with my sea sponges to get a nice texture on here and once i get a little bit of this color of the light brown reddish tone i am going to seal it once that dries i'm going to move on to the next color seal it and for the final layer i'm going to add some darker tones and a little bit of highlights and then seal it again the first layer is all dried now to protect this layer so i can go to the next one which is the darker medium brown the burnt umber i am going to seal it with the clear again and let that dry for a good 30 minutes and then go on to the next layer Here is what the finished sewer door looks like, all repainted, and it turned out fantastic. I'm really happy how this came out. Here is what the front of it looks like. It is pretty much night and day. For some of you who are wondering why I decided to repaint this, this is actually my buddy Raymond's Pennywise bust. He is picky, I would say but not really. I can see why he wanted to repaint on this just because. Before, I would say it's more of a flatter finish and it had more of a heavy rust brown. And me, just by doing a little bit of texturing, it really made a big difference and having some good highlights to really make this sewer door bust out and have a lot of nice detail. While I was done with that, I actually worked on this side of the sewer drain too to make that pop so it can match with this one. Overall, I'm pretty happy in how this one came out. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give this a like and subscribe and even share this video. It really means a lot to me. And hopefully you guys really enjoyed this tutorial on how to give a nice metal look. And it hopefully it gives you a general idea on how to give a nice rustic color. And overall, you can apply the same method on anything. It can be helmets, uh, resin pieces, anything you want to have a nice metal or rusted look to it. I will also have a link in the description down below where you can find this Pennywise bus. This was a limited run and I don't know if you can get this anymore, but if you can, it's probably at a high price, probably through another seller on like eBay because you would have to get the second hand. And hopefully you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. Very fun doing this video and I think it came out very cool and very awesome how everything turned out and I had no problems whatsoever. Leave some comments down below on what you'd like to see in the future and thanks for watching again. Take care.